people engage is down for dueling decades The Matrix and Blade versus Bloodsport and Renegade Strap on that cap, bust out the power glove Come fight for what you love Dueling decades Poop culture popping pins, dropping hand grenades Van Halen locked in Mortal Kombat with David Gray Found out ballet in sick, Iron Maid of GNR Come fight for what you love Dueling decades Old foods in 1991, you guys have control of the board Where are we going? Mike, where you want to take a little jaunt to, buddy? Well, I think uh, we should go to music because that's horrible. All right, let's do that. <laughs> <laughs> oh, shit. I'll kick this one <clears throat> off then. Please uh, do. Music, released January 29th, 1991. Doubt, which is the second album from Jesus Jones. Uh, oh, the album itself God. reached number 25 on oh, the Billboard 200 chart. It also contained the single Right Here, Right Now, which performed uh, very well. Right here, right now. That's right. Reaching number one on the U.S. Alternative Chart, number two on the U.S. Billboard Hot 100, number seven on the U.S. Mainstream Rock Yard. Also, did I say Rock Yard? Mainstream Rock Chart and uh, scoring number 17 on the U.S. Billboard Hot 100 year-end chart. Kind of a juggernaut, that song. <laughs> That's the first time Jesus Jones and Juggernaut have ever been said together. <laughs> I believe that was the name of his third album. For next year. Mike's got a mixtape or, or a compilation or something. I can just see it. It's, not, it's, it's a remix album. Make Out Jams Volume 4. It is not a album from LL Cool J. We're not that lucky. No, what I chose was a performance because on January 27th, 1991, Super Bowl 25 had little, several, sell, had little to celebrate. The gloom of the Gulf War hung over the heads of many Americans and the fear of attack on this American tradition grounded the Goodyear blimp and nearly forced the game to be rescheduled. Despite the chaos surrounding the event, a young Whitney Houston stepped on the 50-yard line and gave us one of the most famous moments of her career. The diva brought a worried nation together and si with simply a song, and troops across the globe tuned in as, as if the performance was solely for them. Reporters later asked Miss Houston what she planned to do next. She replied, Correct. I'd like to take a long, hot bath. <laughs> <laughs> That's uh, code for drugs. <laughs> wow. Oh, shit. I'd like to take a long, hot shit. <laughs> which is code for bobby brown <laughs> oh man i can man were they really that bad album wise dude it's fucking yeah, horrible yeah it was wow. pretty it's atrocious horrible. i was it, looking through it like, really is I, I was looking up like what was the number one video on mtv that week you know like <laughs> well i mean if i if i let you know that some some of the other choices they could have had were this year's girl by pizzicato five that Ooh. famous, yeah, exactly. <laughs> uh, Fly Me Courageous by Driving Ooh. and Crying. Yeah, that's yeah. Awesome. Yeah. What I like about that is that it's yeah. driving. They haven't even put like, they haven't put the G on that word. They don't put the G on crying and they don't even spell out and. It's just driving and crying. <laughs> yeah, but that's uh, genius. That's Cutting genius. out those letters, yeah. that saved them an extra six bucks in font fees. <laughs> no, completely. <laughs> Um, you could have gone for the specials singles collection. That's a pretty, uh, uh, that's a pretty tight album. Um, what else have we got? It does not sound tight at all. It, it, I listen. I like the specials. Don't even come at the specials. Oh, I, oh, I thought it was a specials single collection. No, no, like, no. The specials, like the band. Special. No, no. Oh, a collection <laughs> of special singles by special. <laughs> 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 oh there we laugh okay back in 1991 that would have just been called best of the retards and we would have had done with it <laughs> uh you have step in the arena by gang star um yeah uh native son by judy bats um, oh god really what was, a classic yeah what a classic <laughs> i mean that on vinyl I'm looking. I'm looking down the list, and you're right. Really, there's there's very little whatsoever. Party mix in Mesopotamia, uh, a reissue with remixes by the B52s. There was no jock jams. <laughs> no, no jock jams. Um, oh. Yeah, no. Gloria Estefan put out "Into the Light." Ooh, that's about it. Which you know was I was close with that one. Yeah, 
but no, yeah, you're right. January 1991 should be stricken from the musical register forever because it's Damn. yeah, it's, it's it's a pile of shite, as they it's would embarrassment. say. Embarrassment. All right. You want me to start it, music it, off here on this one, Man Crush? Uh, whatever. Yeah, okay. All right. <laughs> this doesn't sound like it's going to be tough. All right. So, January 29th, 1982. Picture this: the second album. By the sounds of the 1980s, Huey Lewis and the News is released. The album brought the band their very first top 10 hit, Do You Believe in Love, which remained on the Billboard charts for 35 weeks and peaked at number seven. Picture This also gave us the follow-up hits, uh, Hope You Love Me Like You Say You Do, and my favorite cut from that album, Working for a Living. January 29th, 1982, Huey Lewis and the News. Solid, solid. And now I've heard, weather. I've heard of him. <laughs> <laughs> All right, uh, I got released on January nineteenth, nineteen eighty-two, by Epitaph Records. It was the first full-length album by legendary punk band Bad Religion. Uh, the name of the album, "How Could Hell Be Any Worse?" Uh, the most notable song in the album is probably "We're Only Gonna Die." I mean, if, if you guys are Sublime fans, it was on Forty Ounces to Freedom released in 92 which probably would have been a better album than both ones you guys picked uh this is actually pretty cool they originally only pressed 6,000 copies of this album but it, it sold more than that up to 12,000 after the first year but this is the really fucking cool part of this not only did they personally stuff all the albums by hand but to relieve the boredom of stuffing the albums they sometimes slipped little notes in the sleeve or autographed some of the copies and you were asking yourself, why were these guys stuffing albums? Well, it just so happens that they started Epitaph Records for this album. Uh, if you know anything about punk music, Epitaph is probably one of the biggest independent names in punk music. Uh, over the years, they've had Green Day, Weezer, Offspring, Rancid, the Circle Jerks, No Effects, Pennywise. The list goes on and on of who they had on that label. Um, but epitaph all started because of how could hell be any worse and it was the debut album of bad Religion. wow nice pick man it's double whammy yeah punk music's not a genre i know a ton about so i'm glad i got you on my side to back us up on that one but i i also feel though that we completely missed a, a fantastic opportunity if you remember when we were talking about 1991 i mentioned that Mesopotamia by the B-52s was re-released that January, uh, a weird uh, nine year later re-release because it was also originally released in January of 1982, Mesopotamia by the B-52s. So you could have had the same album fighting yeah. against each uh, itself. Uh, sadly, we missed that opportunity. Uh, so God. really uh, nobody wins. <laughs> uh, <but laughs> Uh, I think we all, yeah, we all win we all, because we all win. nobody picked the B-52. <laughs> uh, other, albums, other, other albums you could have had from 1982, January of 1982, was Wasn't Tomorrow, Wo Wasn't Tomorrow Wonderful by The Waitresses. I think the resounding answer to that was oh. no. Uh, <laughs> all for a Song by Barbara Dickinson. Uh, Mystical Adventures by Jean-Luc Ponty. Uh, one of my favorite John Luke's. Uh, I love Jean Luc Ponty. His work on Frank Zappa's apostrophe is phenomenal. One of the best violin players I've ever heard. I almost picked that album. Thank God. <laughs> yeah. uh, Somewhere over China by Jimmy Buffett. That was his. Uh, that was his controversial <laughs> communist album, uh, which in 1982 really got Jimmy Buffett into some. Uh, <laughs> hot hot uh, situation so therefore he had to kind of go back to his usual twangy annoying cocktail based ditties oh uh, so this was way before he got into the gangster rap scene then yeah no definitely <laughs> definitely but oh, okay. uh, ju just 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 before he got into the uh, um punk clog dancing uh and uh <laughs> i don't know cello quartet 
vibe. Oh, I yes, that was like four <laughs> months before he got into the throat th singing thing. Yes, yeah, I know right where you're you guys talking. Need to about. stop because you're really gonna convince somebody otherwise. <laughs> I still prefer his uh, folka work. His folk polka. It was okay, but folk polka. That's one of my favorites. <laughs> it's 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 also what it sounds like when like a Scottishman is about to do something sexual. <laughs> um anyway <laughs> uh it goes to 1982 next <laughs> you like huey lewis on the news 1982 wins because huey lewis and the news is my sweet spot that's where i live i also like to kill hookers with axes 